Good morning. Welcome y'all to the Crazy Sock Lady YouTube channel. The, the take three, four maybe this morning of, of trying to record. My neighbor is having work done on her fence. So we'll see if, if this take is the one that we get to record. <laughs> There's lots of banging going on and I get like a few minutes in and then it starts again. Anyways, welcome. My name is Kay. I am the person behind Crazy Sock Lady. I am the owner of Crazy Sock Lady Co. And I'm happy to have you here today to chat about all the things. My, my dining room table is very full. Lots of fun things to share with you today. Grab your beverage of choice. Do you have coffee, wine, water? Whatever you got today, cheers to you and to our creating and let's let's chat. I'm feeling a little, a little crazy this morning. <laughs> So we're just gonna jump right in. I should probably say first, you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as the crazy sock lady. I will, as always, have links right down below this video to the places that you can find me, as well as links for all of the projects that I talk about to the Ravelry project page. I always do that so you guys can easily find links to the patterns that I talk about, um, details about needles I used etc because I do forget things and sometimes it's hard for you guys to jot down things so just look for all those links right down below the video I think that's it let's let's talk finished objects first I've uh, always got coffee of course um, my crazy sock lady mug this is definitely one of like, these are my favorite style mugs. We have these in the shop, Crazy Sock Lady and Scrappy Sunday. I just love the style and size of these. Okay, finished objects. I finished a pair of socks last night. These are the Journey socks. These are by a pattern by Margaret of Heidi and Lana. And these are the second pair I've done of these. I used leftovers. So I made my friend Jenny a pair of socks out of this yarn. This is by Amplifiber in the crystallized sugar. It was a sock set. I didn't use the purple. I still had some of that left, but I didn't use the mini. I just used the main skein from the sock set. These are a no-show type of socks. I knit these up on a US 1 2.25 millimeter needles. DPNs is what I use for these Chalgu DPNs. And I did follow the pattern exactly as it was written. Last time I did my toe in the pattern and this time I decided, and I thought it could have been a little, a little more negative ease lengthwise. They still fit great. They do not fall off. I've had a lot of questions about that. They do not slide off. My store-bought socks that are no-shows constantly slide off. I have not had any issues with the last pair of journey socks that I made sliding off, but I just felt like they could have had a bit more negative ease. So this time I followed the pattern exactly like it says to, and did the start of the toe when it said to, did the toe that's in the pattern and these fit even better than the last pair. So I recommend following the pattern, which you know, you, you should do anyways. <laughs> um, that should be common sense, but sometimes we think, no, I'm gonna do this or that. And sometimes it works, but sometimes, you know, if you follow the pattern, it's even better. <laughs> so I followed the pattern. I love the fit of these. I will definitely be making more for wearing in tennis shoes. Yeah, great fit, fast, easy knit. Definitely recommend the Journey socks. The other thing that I have, I had these done last time actually, I think all three of them, but I just forgot to talk about them. I did post about this on Instagram when I was doing them and I need to do more. I haven't done them in a little while. Look at these little ducks. Oh my goodness. <laughs> this pattern, I will have it linked below. I can't remember the details off the top of my head. Um, so cute. <laughs> so I, if you followed for a while, if you've watched the vlogs, watched Instagram, you know I have a Jeep Wrangler and there's a thing where you duck Jeeps. It's little rubber duckies usually. And it's just a fun thing to make the person smile, like saying, hey, I like your Jeep, nice Jeep. And you, you see a Jeep in a parking lot, you leave a duck and that's it. So I thought I would do some little crocheted ducks because Jeep 
season as far as like events that we go to and things like that and seeing more Jeeps out and having the tops off and all of that fun stuff that comes along with the Jeep. That is all starting back up with the warmer weather coming, hopefully, eventually. <laughs> so I thought it would be fun to have some of these these will of course only be given to very special jeeps <laughs> i will not <laughs> just throw these around because they do take a little time not that long but yeah only really special jeeps will get these but they're just so cute i think this one's my favorite i haven't crocheted in forever i started out crocheting that was my first Kind of fiber craft that i did and it's been a while but i think they turned out pretty cute the yarn i used is just something i picked up at joann's which is kind of dumb because i probably could have dug through my scraps and found something to use but i went ahead and bought a it was just like their like brand of acrylic um just a yellow and an orange and then for the eyes i it's embroidery thread or floss whatever that's called, that's what I'm using for the eyes. And I'm just following the pattern exactly as it is written. So that will be linked below. But yeah, I just thought I would show those because they're super cute. That's all I've got for finished objects. I hear a little bit of pounding coming from next door. So hopefully that's not too loud. What should we talk about first? Let's talk about my sea glass sweater because I finished the first sleeve. It's done. I've got this in a ginormous bag. This is from Bags by Awesome Granny, which we're gonna talk more about some of her other bags here in just a bit. I have my 30 minutes of knitting pin on there. That is at Crazy Sock Lady Co. is where you can find that pin. Set this back up here. <laughs> such a big bag it's so great all right I finished the first sleeve this morning and started the second sleeve so I've been doing this for my 30 minutes of knitting because I've just like hit a roadblock with it and I'm just like oh I just want it to be done but I don't want to work on it at the same time it's definitely at this point become a product knit I, I may have talked about that last time it's just the the 30 minutes of knitting is just letting me know I'm going to get that knitting done on it. Otherwise, I'm not going to pick it up right now. So here it is. I'm like so close to this plant this morning. I feel like it's like, it's like taking over this morning. I keep hitting it. Anyways, stand up so you can kind of see. I, I know I'm going to love this, but the first sleeve is done. I'll talk about the pattern and yarns I'm using in, um, in just a moment after we talk about the sleeve, but I did do a folded cuff on the sleeve. So it's a paid for pattern, so I'm not going to give away details, but the length that it called for for the cuff, I knit double that length and then folded it up. And then I t just like kind of like sewed it down, tacked it down, whatever you want to call it. What I did the bind off and then tacked that down. Let me know below if you guys would like a video on how I did that. I could just record that on the next sleeve really quickly. I There's probably a million different ways you can do this, but I don't know. I think the way I did it worked pretty well. I like the look of it. I did do a sewn bind off for that and for the bottom. That's my favorite bind off to do. Yeah, I'm super happy with this. So the pattern again is the sea glass sweater. It is by Wool and Pine Designs. I am using Knit Picks Swish DK for the gray. It is Dove Heather is the color name. And then for the contrast color, I am just using just a ton of different fingering weight wraps there's some of them here just a ton of those and I'm just grabbing two scraps out of there and holding them double to make a DK weight 
for the contrast collar and I think that's worked out really well it's kind of just given like this overall crazy pinky purple kind of color scheme without seeming like stripes in the collar which is not what I wanted I didn't want it to be stripey with the colors so yeah I'm super pleased with how this is working up second sleeve is started I'm using my Chowgu twist set that we do have over in the shop right now. I think we still have those in stock. So yeah, I'm just gonna keep going along. Maybe in like a month, you'll see this again because the second sleeve will be done. <laughs> it's definitely just taken a while. I get about six rounds done. I am with the contrast color, I'm changing colors every round. So I get about six rounds done in my 30 minutes of knitting. That includes weaving in ends for six rounds because I knit some, weave in some ends, knit some, weave in some ends. So within that 30 minutes, I'm knitting six rounds and weaving in ends for six rounds. It'll get done. It's just, it's just taken a while. I have not done a ton on my DRK sweater. So I didn't bring that over this time to show, but I do have a, two new cast ons that we will talk about. This was, this one is a pair of socks in a bag by Daisy Girl and Company. These are some of my favorite bags. We are gonna have her bags coming to Crazy Sock Lady Co. very, very soon. So yeah, keep your eyes out and keep your eyes peeled. Keep your eyes out. So this is, I have just been, I knit two pairs of socks back in October of last year that were similar to this sock that I have here. And it they were so much fun to do. It was such a fun idea using up minis and scraps and so I decided let's knit a pair of socks like that again I have the first one done and with these I just dug through my scraps minis some of these are row one minis some of these are scraps from my projects I don't remember what any of the yarns are so I'm sorry about that but I have on my Ravelry project page notes for how I'm doing this. I tell you when you should weigh, how you should like should weigh with your stripes, how many rounds I'm doing, how many grams I used for different sections to kind of get you going. Lots of notes, it's a full, full notes things over there. I've, I had some people back in October and then again when I started this asked me to do like a written pattern for this, but I'm, I'm just gonna have my notes there on Ravelry in my project page. I don't think you really need a written out pattern for this. It's just my vanilla socks pattern is what I'm using here. So you can use my vanilla socks pattern, or if you have your own vanilla sock recipe that you like to use, you can use that. And then my notes are just telling you, like giving you recommendations for weigh your yarn here and then weigh it again there. And just to kind of make sure you have enough for your sock. I just love the stripes down the leg. When I did these back in October, it was kind of inspired by the Regia Perfect socks. I've knit quite a few pairs of those. And then I just decided to do the stripes on the foot too, half the width of the ones on the leg, so that it just gives a little bit of a difference from the leg. And you're using up just a tiny, tiny bit of yarn for these ones on the foot, such a small amount. Um, but then you're still getting to use up more of your scraps and things. So I thought these were a lot of fun. These are for me and I have the second sock started. I'm using, knitting these up on nine inch circulars, US one, or no, I'm sorry, US zero, two millimeter, because I go down with my nine inch circulars because my gauge loosens when I use these things. 64 stitches, knit two purl two ribbing for the cuff. I think that's about it for those. 
I just love all of these together. It was so much fun to dig through scraps for these. So Eric has said a couple of times, I think, when I've shown him these, like, oh, look where I'm at now. Look at this, look at that. <laughs> he has said how much he really likes this sock. I wanted it for myself, so I made it for myself, but I think I'm gonna have enough to make him a pair as well. I might change a couple of things on it. Like I think I love, you guys know I absolutely love doing a pop of color at the cuff. So I think I'll do like a pop of color at the cuff with the green for his. And then we'll see if I make any other changes as I go. I guess I could always do like a green heel maybe too or something. I'm not sure. We'll see how much of the gray I have left after my second sock. Um, but yeah, and that way if I do a pop of color like I always do at the cuff, it will let me know whose is whose. Obviously his are bigger, but sometimes when you're folding socks and putting things away, I get them mixed up all the time and I'll put his socks in my drawers or my socks in his. It's So then I'll just be able to know that that one is his. All right, I think that's it on those. Definitely check out the project page. If I know some people are knitting along with me and that's so much fun. I'm so enjoying when you tag me and I get to see those socks. It's such a fun idea to use up scraps and in a different way. So all the notes are over there. Like I said, I'm not gonna do a pattern. I don't feel you need a written pattern for something like that. Um, just those basic notes and maybe I'll do a video for camp or something on, on those. We'll see. Just kind of talking about weighing your yarns and scrap, scrappy socks and things. Okay, last work in progress that I brought over to show is in a bag from Bags by Awesome Granny. Love that B. So cute. This is my festive wrap. I talked about it last week. I really wanted to cast it on and I just did it. I cast it on, I started it and I love it. I have not wanted to put it down. Unfortunately, I feel like I have not had a ton of knitting time recently, but I'm loving it. <laughs> so here's my progress so far. I'm on section four. So all of these are McMullen Fiber Co. And I'll talk about all the details on the yarn in just a minute. But I did, this was a main skein that I had from McMullen Fiber Co. So I did section one and section two in that. And then we've got section three, which is these hearts. And I'm into section four. This is a pattern by Amba O'Brien. It uses 16 mini skeins. I had 12 in a set, it's gonna be a little loud, a set from McMullen. This is the Canyon Collection Mega Mini Skein Set. <laughs> it's a little bit of a mess now as I've taken minis out and I've rearranged them a million times in the order I want them to go in. And what else? Oh, the main skein, do I have the tag for that? It is Frozen Forest. That's the main skein. So since I only had 12 minis, that this main skein I'm using for two sections at the beginning and two sections at the end. I think that'll kind of just like tie it together at both ends. So yeah. Thoroughly enjoying it. It's been so long since I've knit something like lacy that I really have to pay attention to like this. I mean, I guess the cabled sweater I did, I definitely have to pay attention to, but I haven't done lace in forever and I haven't done a shawl or a wrap or anything like this in a while. So I am really, really enjoying it. And you guys know me and I'm a paper gal, but I have been using Knit Companion for this and actually enjoying it. I don't know what has clicked this time, but I'm really enjoying it. So I did, one change that I made was I bought a new iPad. Not new, new, new to me. It's a refurbished iPad. 
but it's like a 10.5 inch screen because my iPad was an iPad mini before, so it was smaller. It just made it harder to see charts and things and I didn't like having to zoom in all the time. And then I was trying it on my phone, which was even worse, obviously, because it's smaller. So the change of having a larger screen for the iPad has really made a difference. And I've been enjoying it this time. It's nice to have that just to pull up on the iPad and not have a paper laying beside me on the couch. I don't know why it's making a difference this time because I still have something beside me on the couch. I don't know, but I'm liking it this time. So I'm going with it. And I do think I'll be using it more often. I'm using Chowgu needles for that interchangeable set, using the needle sizes recommended and following the pattern. Exactly. I have made a couple mistakes <laughs> and I've just fudged it and went with it and nobody will ever know. It'll be okay. Mail shop stuff. We got other things to chat about, but that's it for works in progress. So bags by awesome granny. She has sent me over. She sent me the bee bag and she also sent me this amazing tulip print bag. I can't wait to use this spring, summer. It's such a beautiful fabric. This is her extra large size, which is what I have my sea glass sweater in. Amazing for like a scrappy project, a blanket, a sweater, for just putting all your other smaller project bags in to take somewhere. Love this size. <laughs> It has yellow polka dots on the inside and there's her tag and she also she had this sock fabric and she asked me if I would want one of these bags and how could you say no to that look at that fabric it's so cute so she sent me over one of these this one has green polka dots in it her tag again so much fun so she I should have had this along the bottom the whole time I was talking a coupon code for y'all I can't remember it off the top of my head right now but I'm gonna put it on the bottom of the screen it'll be down below with a link to her shop you guys head over and check out her shop she has so many different sizes she has um, you can get it with a little notions bag to match your project bag which is always fun so definitely Definitely head over and check out Darlene of Bags by Awesome Grady. Hello from K of the Future. K of the Future is watching the podcast while I'm editing and realizing that I forgot to do a giveaway. So Darlene has given us a bag. It'll be winner's choice from her shop. So all you have to do is comment down below this video and I will draw a winner for the next episode. Okay, bye couple of other things that came in the mail. I got a package from Three Tulips Yarn Company. She sent over these two skeins. Let me show you her logo. She sent over these two skeins. I mean, are these both not my colors right here? <laughs> so pretty. This one is Blackberry Swirl number 53. purples and grays. Perfect. And this one is wildflowers number 56. These are both fingering weight. I think they're both 7525. Yes, 7525. We'll make some absolutely beautiful socks. She also sent over some minis for scrappy knitting, she said. And she's out of Erie, Pennsylvania, and she also sent some chocolate from a local chocolate company that Wyatt and I have already dug into. Eric and Austin are not huge on sweets, so darn, more for me and Wyatt. <laughs> it is delicious. I will put her a link to her shop down below. All these shops will have a link down below. Okay, the last thing that came in the mail is my Yarnable subscription box for 
April. I have in the past always done different videos for these, but time lately, y'all, I'm just going to start including them for now anyways in the podcast. So this is the April box. And if you have not gotten yours for whatever reason, I would think everybody should have by now. But if you haven't and you don't want anything to be spoiled, come back and watch it after you receive it or skip ahead a little bit because I'm going to dig right in. So Yarnable, I've been doing this. Oh my gosh. I always say this and then I never remember. <laughs> it's been well over a year, well over a year that I've been getting it. You, it is a yarn subscription service and you can customize it to get one or two skeins of fingering weight or DK weight. And then you always get a little bag of extras. And all of this is put together by Cheryl of Hypnotic Yarns. I get one skein of fingering weight, always. I should probably at some point switch it to DK to get <laughs> some different things, but. So there's always a card in here that tells you a little bit about the Yarnable box for the month. This one says it is Mermazing. It's brought to you by Mermaid Scales, Sea Foam, and Salty Air. Perfect going into the warmer months. It tells you what extras you get in the box. And then there is always a scratch off discount code that you can use for the month of April or whatever month you get your box in um, over at Hypnotic Yarn. Oh, these are cute. So we've got, are these stickers too? Oh no, I thought they were stickers too, but they're like the little clips. I will love using these over at the shop. Cute little mermaid tails. That's adorable. Soothing bath salts, lemongrass infused with lemongrass essential oil. Wyatt is going to steal these. They are from Simply Organic Soap. Wyatt loves any kind of like stuff like this and bath bombs and this is cute. Sassy since birth, salty by choice. Oh, that's cute. Oh my goodness. Do you guys know what I'm going to do with this? I can't get to my ducks. They've gotten buried. There's a Jeep that's a mermaid themed Jeep. She has like scales. I, I swear I think they're like these exact colors. Like decals of scales on her car. It's just a mermaid themed Jeep. And we see her at mostly every event we go to. She's going to get a crochet duck and I'm going to give her this keychain. Because that, how cute. This will be perfect. I almost feel like she has a sticker that says something about being salty by choice or something. Um, that's totally what I'm going to do. Oh my gosh, that's a perfect idea. Okay, the yarn always comes in a bag like this, which I the plant I love because I can look at everything else and I can save the yarn for last. Oh my gosh. Look at this. I think I need to start socks with this today. <laughs> I have, I have a yarn over here too that I was going to tell you guys, I'm going to start socks with this today, but wow. This is beautiful. This is, the colorway is more amazing. I always get the fingering, which is her plush sock, 8515 Superwash Merino Nylon Blend. Like I said, you can customize this. You can get fingering weight. You can get DK weight. The sun is trying to come out. It's very bright. Um, I do have a coupon code you can use. It get you five dollars off of your first yarnable box. It is Sock Lady. I'll have all the details and links below. They are only open at select times for new members. So what you wanna do is follow that link, if you're interested in signing up for Yarnable, follow that link, put your email address in, anytime they have spots open up, and sometimes that can happen at any time. <laughs> they will send you an email and say, hey, we have spots open. Here's your, your link to go sign up right now. So you definitely want to, if you're interested, that's what I always recommend you do so that you'll be notified when something opens up. I think I only have one more thing. Let me double check my notes. Talked about those. Um, just a, oh, the Lambikins Yarn Shop Retreat that I talked about last time. I had some people ask if I could give some more details on that. So this last 
or the one that I went to, um, you know, I can't speak for how any future ones will go, if there'll be any changes or how it will go, but it was at a retreat center. We stayed in like the lodge area, which was just set up like a hotel and meals were provided. There was like the hotel and then there was like a separate building where we sat and knit all day long. They did have vendors on Saturday and we basically, it was just like a knit night that lasted all weekend long. <laughs> <laughs> all meals were provided included in the price that you paid to attend there was a separate building that was like the there's a name for it you're screaming at like a cafeteria type I feel like there's a separate name for that but it's like a cafeteria you went in and got your food um, so you had breakfast lunch dinner provided I think that's pretty much it um, there were no classes or anything like that it was like I said, just an amazing knit night. There were some games, prizes, different things that ha would happen in the evenings, but just knit all weekend. Met so many amazing people, definitely so much fun, and I cannot wait to go back again next year. So I just wanted to touch base on that and give just a little bit more details because I kind of skimmed, you know, and just mentioned that I had went to the retreat and didn't say too much about it last time. So I wanted to show you guys some yarn that's over at Crazy Sock Lady Co. that I'm going to be knitting socks with probably gonna start a pair today. Maybe I shouldn't. Oh, I don't know. I just want to start all the socks right now for some reason. I want to start socks with the yarnable. I want to start socks with at least one of these skeins that I'm going to show you. But I also want to remind you guys that we are open for in-person shopping, knitting. We have a, a room where you can hang out and knit every other Saturday. So we were just open this past Saturday. What was that? The second. And we are going to be open. I'm going to double check this calendar. <laughs> We are going to be open April 16th, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. If you are local or somewhat local and you want to come hang out for a bit, browse around the shop, we are going to have, we should have some new Cascade Heritage prints and Cascade Heritage yarns in stock by then, a restock of some of the ones that have sold out. You guys are loving that Heritage prints and it is such an amazing and wonderfully priced yarn. So we're gonna have more of that. I got a big shipment from Polka Dot Creek in, so that will be there as well. And if you are not local, don't fret. Everything will go on the website after the in-person that day. So by 3 p.m. is when I've usually been getting everything um, updated to the website and the website's back live with anything new and, and all the stuff that's, that's currently in stock. The Polka Dot Creek, we've got sock sets, we've got fingering weight, DK weight, tonals, mini skein sets. Um, I'll try to post a picture here of just like a sneak peek. It's all in bags and you can't really tell what anything is. <laughs> but just a peek at the gorgeous yarns that are coming. I'm trying to start stocking more tonal solids for, they're great for socks too, but yeah, for, you can use them for anything. So many of your different projects you can use um solids and tonals in fingering and dk weight so we have happy mermaid yarn co in the shop right now in fingering and dk weight these are exclusive colorways six new i believe there's six six new exclusive colorways to crazy sock lady co and i had eric and his mom pick some yarns for socks i you guys know i love making socks for them so while they were over at the shop i said hey can you guys pick out some yarns and I'll, I'll knit socks. So Eric picked this one and this is a DK weight. It's called Pretty in Pink. Oh no, oh no. It's gonna get majorly blown out if I hold it up there. The sun, we're gonna try pulling the camera up here just for this last little bit so that you can see this a little better. Well, the lighting is like pretty good right now, huh? Back in this part, so. This is Pretty in Pink, Happy Mermaid Yarn Co. DK Weight. Their logo is so cute. And this is a 7525 Superwash Merino Nylon Blend. That's what Eric picked. My mother-in-law, Teresa, picked these two. We have, these are both on DK as well. These, this is Troll Hair. I love the name of this and it's just 
so pretty. All those purples and like turquoise teal greens. And then she picked garden fairies. So I'm not sure which one I will start with. Which one do you guys think I should do first? It's definitely a little off now, isn't it? Which one do you think I should do first? I might already have it started by the time this goes up, but let me know which one you think I should do first. And I think that's it for today. I'm just gonna use my free vanilla socks or vanilla DK weight sock pattern for all of these. I think that's all for today. I had so much fun catching up with y'all. Hope that you guys enjoyed this video and I will chat with you again in a couple of weeks. Until then, happy knitting. Bye.